Hi everyone, Dave Knight here with Thornton and Grooms. Wanted to talk to you today about sump pumps and backup sump pumps. We have a lot of rain in the forecast and with that we want to make sure that your sump pump is operating properly and uh, also just talk to you about the option of ha having a backup sump pump in addition to an alarm. So we're looking at the sump system that's actually in my house and I uh, want to just give you a a layout of, of what we're looking at here. So the white pipe on the right is connected to the primary sump pump. You can see that that is a, a separate line from the white pipe on the left, which is the discharge line that's connected to the water-powered backup sump pump. Um, that is uh, independent of the primary sump pump. Very important that those two lines are independent in the event that there's an issue with the line outside that takes the water away. And then a third device, which is a, an alarm, which we'll listen to in just a moment. That's connected to a float inside the pit that we'll look at in just a moment uh, in the event that the water level gets past the primary pump and the secondary or water-powered backup pump. We are now looking straight down into the sump pit and the first thing that I do upon inspection is just to make sure that everything is secure, clamped, tight, nothing's vibrated loose during normal operations. So I just want to make sure everything looks kind of normal and is secure. Uh, I've done that, but that's uh, the first thing that I do. Uh, also making sure that everything's plugged in and um, tightly into the receptacle. Um, the next thing I look for is just to see if there's anything out of the ordinary that has happened. Uh, don't see anything now, but often we'll see that maybe some construction debris or something that we've stored or even a child's toy could have possibly entered uh, into the pit or near the pit. We want to make sure there's nothing near it just to uh, prevent something bad from happening. So uh, if that were the case, and if there was say a ball or something in the pit, I would just reach down and get it out of there. The next thing I'm going to look for is just any other small debris, rocks, uh, paper, anything like that. Then I'll look at the floats. Which you'll see the one on the right is um, for the primary pump. That's the white device on the right. So that's this right here. And then this pump here, which is the black device, that's connected to the water-powered backup. Pump. I just want to make sure that those are free and clear, that there's nothing obstructing their movement as the water level goes up and down. The next thing I'm going to do is exercise the floats. I want to activate the pump and simulate a high water level. And I want to hear the pump operate and just make sure everything looks normal. So I'm going to do the float on the right first, and then I'll activate the float on the left. And in both cases, you'll hear the pumps operate. So here we go on the primary pump. So that looks good. And now we're gonna do the water powered backup pump. All right, perfect. And then the third thing and last float that I'm going to check is the alarm float. So I'm just going to lift up on the alarm float and you'll hear the noise. So that's in the event that the water level gets past the primary pump, gets past the water powered backup pump, and now has reached this third level water level, which means neither are working. So I really need to give this, this some attention. So now that we've seen the inside of the sump pump system, I wanted to show you the outside uh, and where the piping terminates and just a couple of things to note and take into consideration as you start to learn and understand how your sump pump system operates. Uh, so we'll flip the camera around so I can show you the two components that we're gonna discuss. So now we're looking at the two discharge pipes from the sump pump system. The one on the left is the primary sump pump discharge pipe. As you can see, that goes straight into the ground with a little fitting that allows for 
overflow in the event that the pipe that's underground gets blocked or broken, obstructed. Ours gravity drains all the way to the back of the yard to a little ravine about 100 feet away. Based on application, it can be installed in the way in which we did it, or if there is a storm system pipe available to you to tie into, you could do that, or you could use a dry well. Uh, just lots of ways to get rid of this water as long as we're getting it away from the house. The pipe on the right is the water backup. So that's this pipe here. That's the water backup pump discharge pipe. You can see that that just opens up to uh, the outside, the atmosphere, and, and really it's done intentionally. So in the event that this pump was functioning, you'd see water coming out of this pipe. And I was testing it earlier so you can see the depression in the ground. And really you want to smooth that out. I'm not going to do it now because it's muddy, but you want that smooth and you want to inspect this area um, every so often and just see if there's any evidence that this backup pump is working. In the event that it is, you want to go take a look at your sump system in the basement and identify why the uh, backup system is operating. Uh, but this is how a properly piped sump system should look.